All right. Um, today I'm going to be going over out of band BIOS remote management. Uh, my name is Matthew Krishak, and I'm from AMI. Uh, the agenda is going to be going over an introduction, uh, going over the UEFI building blocks, uh, creating a solution, a uh, demo, and finally a call to action. So corporations need a method to configure and deploy many systems on their network. Uh, currently configuring the updates and OS development can be annoying, time consuming, can cause costly downtime, may require operating system based tools, difficulty rises with the number of systems, each system requires individual attention, uh, current industry solutions are proprietary and do not offer a unified solution for multiple hardware vendors. So the industry needs, uh, but the ecosystem is missing, uh, bare metal abilities, capabilities, remote configuration capabilities, remote firmware update capabilities, security capabilities, scalability capabilities, uh, migration, cloning, and scripting, and solutions for systems with and without a BMC. Uh, so by combining several industry standards together, offers a highly manageable solution from UEFI, REST, JSON, OData, and Redfish. What is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's a scalable software architecture. It's standardized operations, such as get, post, put, and delete. It uh, standardized operands. It's a stateless autonomic uh, operations. What is JSON? JSON is a JavaScript object notation. It's a lightweight uh, data interchangeable format. It's easy uh, for humans to read and edit. It's easy for machines to parse and generate. Uh, it's much smaller grammar than XML. XML is good for documents, but JSON is better for data structures and used for programming in languages, programming languages. What is OData? OData is Open Data Protocol. It is an open protocol which allows the creation and consumption of queryable and in interoperable RESTful APIs in a standard way. Uh, Microsoft initiated OData in 2007. Uh, versions 1, 2, and 3 were de defined by Microsoft. Uh, version 4 moved to Oasis. Multiple open source uh, projects available to support OData-based schemes, schemas. Uh, what is Redfish? Of course, Redfish is our successor to previous management interfaces. It's an industrial standard. It's a technology for man management control to expose RESTful interfaces for management clients. Redfish allows RESTful interfaces, uh, such as the JSON format, secure using HTTPS, a multi-node aggregated rack level server capable, a schema's uh, backed human readable output. UFI firmware communicates with BMC using Redfish standard for typical BIOS BMC data exchange. Uh, for systems without BMC, network communication with ODATA servers can be done instead. So UFI building blocks, of course the UFI network stack, uh, EFI RESTful uh, protocol support, and UEFI configuration language keywords, uh, UEFI native HTTP support, HTTPS support, uh, both can be used to transfer data and go to specific URLs. BIOS REST support, new in UEFI 2.5 was EFI REST protocol interface to communicate with REST servers. Uh, uses EFI HTTP utility protocol to build, parse, HTTP headers, uh, standard pre-boot access to RESTful APIs and Redfish-like interfaces, um, abstract communication to applications slash drivers that want to use the REST service. Uh, the EFI REST protocol instance can be installed for an in-band communication with BMCs, as well as an interface for communication via network with the OData server. Uh, UEFI configuration mapping language keywords. As UEFI 2.0 recommends representing questions by configuration language, 
unique keywords defined in separate configuration language for each question's prompt field. Uh, these question keywords are unique strings and allow identification of the questions. These questions are unique. Uh, the generic drivers can be implemented by using X UFI language and can be transferred question details in JSON format for Redfish based configuration. So creating a solution. Out of band program configurations, um, so BIOS configurations are traditionally done in band in the BIOS environment using OS tools. The configuration is stored in NVRAM as a blob of binary data. Configuration data now needs to be properly matched with the individual set of questions. Uh, out of band firmware configuration allows for configuring the BIOS firmware remotely via management control using Redfish with the following considerations Redfish compliant configuration representation. Configuration needs to be managed independent of OS ver of BIOS versions, and configuration can be maintained for different system models. So here we have a graphic. Uh, up top we see HII at number one, and we, we, we can retrieve the platform exported data. We come down to number two, we research tokens with keyword in the configuration language, uh, either in XUFI or in XAMI. Then we come back up to three. After finding the token, say number 33, we search the associated IFR opcodes for a prompt which refers to token number 33. And number four, once the IFR question is uh, found, we use that question's value to read or write. Uh, here we see a uh, remote firmware setup UI, uh, application hosted by a BMC or OData server. HTML, HTML5 pages are pushed from the BIOS to the BMC or OData server. The BMC or OData server parses setup questions, details to show questions, and the get set values. HTML5 provides an easy custom, uh, customization capabilities. So here we're going to see the VFR, how we see uh, you, you, um, uh, an ACP auto setup data. And we also see on the bottom, we see ACPI Hibernate, you know, standard uh, VFR language. And if we turn that, these questions into JSON language, we can see that we still have our, our attribute name, which is ACPI001, a default value, such as S3, a display name, ACPI state. And if we take this one step further into JSON config data, we will see a BIOS configuration. We still see our ACPI 001. Uh, we see ACPI 002 true. We see ACPI 003 false. ACPI 004 false. And then we go, if we're going to make a configuration change, we see that we're only going to be passing the piece that we're changing, which is ACPI 002, and we're going to change that to false. So the whole thing starts with the end user with a Redfish client. Well, we have uh, a BMC and a firmware. The end user will talk to the BMC using REST, uh, which will have the BMC, which will have a Redfish agent, and it will t talk through pass through into the BMC in band interface. And through in band, it will talk to the firmware. The firmware inter uh, in band uh, interface will then use REST over the system interface and rests the firmware set setup. And this can also be expanded to using OData server with firmware uh, that does not have an onboard BMC on it. So here the rest talks directly to the OData server service. Then through the network, the firmware UFI network stack, and then to the rest uh, uh, and the firmware setup. So here we see a, a whole network set up with a server that has a BMC on it. We see where a server uh, talks, the server firmware talks to the BMC, the BMC talks to the network, and then through the network it goes to the management. Here we have one where we have an OData server, which means the uh, target systems don't have BMCs on them. 
And so inside of one of these systems, a, a, a user can change a setting on the system. This data will then get sent up to the OData server. It'll be pushed up to the OData server. The o OData server will then push that back to the management client and change any other settings they want to and push it back up to the OData server. And that will get distributed back out to the target systems. Extending solutions for additional features. Using OData server or BMC solutions to be created beyond firmware configuration. OS deployment be used for firmware update deployment. They can be used for system cloning. They can be used for diagnostic deployment on demand. OS remote backup and restore. Uh, since all these interfaces are abstract, end user organizations can create their own tools and make their IT happy. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the demo. In the demo video, non-BMC firmware management will be shown, including changing firmware settings of the target desktop, changing firmware settings of a target laptop, uh, pushing changes made locally over a target machine to OData server, and pushing changes made remotely on the OData server to a target machine. Hello, UEFI Forum. Uh, I'm Zach Bobra with AMI, and this is Matt with AMI. Uh, today we're going to be demonstrating our remote BIOS configuration uh, through REST, RESTful APIs on these client-based systems. We've got a laptop here, and we've got a desktop. Uh, basically, what we did is we developed our Redfish support on server-based platforms, and in that, we did a JSON method of uh, BIOS configuration through the BMC. We took what we learned there and applied it to client-based systems. So you can now export all of your current settings from your system to an OData server, where you can remotely manage all of the settings uh, that you're looking to do. Uh, it all uses RESTful APIs and small packet transfers, so you can build whatever management tools you want on top of it. We're going to be demonstrating a basic web-based UI that we developed, but we'll be going in and changing some fairly minimal base BIOS settings that will be unobtrusive, so that uh, we're not changing any chipset settings, some basic settings uh, regarding the numlock or the setup timeout, so that you can see that these settings are being transferred back and forth. Um, we're going to start with the desktop system, and then we're going to move over to the laptop. Now note, one of the things you lose in using this with a client-based system is you don't have the power control that you would have with a BMC-based system. You'll still need to uh, be able to remotely power on and off the machine through a technology like AMT or an OS-based service. But let's go ahead and uh, start with the demonstration. Okay, and here we're back with our hardware, uh, our hardware target system for the desktop and our admin system. So you can see our admin system is running on top of the Olingual OData management server that we've connected to, and we can see that we've had a couple of MAC addresses here for our systems. If we come over back to our, our target system, we can see that we can come through our uh, setup options and we can actually come in and change things here. And we can see that we have similar options right here on our web page. So we can go through each one of these and see that we can still see all the same uh, options here. And now we can even change things on side of our target system. For instance, setting up uh, setup timeout to seven, coming over here, saving the changes, and thanks to the UFI network stack, those changes will then be given back to our server. And if we come back to our web page, we will see that it's now updated. Uh, we can do the same thing in reverse. We can come back here, reset this to one, and even set something like numlock to on, save it here, And now we'll go ahead and restart the system. And here we're going to see that it's going to go ahead and connect to the server in a second. And as it connects to the server, it's going to just use the XA My Language to get our particular changes that we've made and restart the system.
And here we're going to go back and enter setup. And we'll see that our changes have been taken. We've reset the timeout to one, and our boot number lock state has changed to on. And we can confirm this by our uh, LED light coming on for a number lock. And that's it. And here we're taking a behind the scenes look at what's going on in the OData Olingo server. Here we see our change that we have just modified. And this is what's going to be set back to our target desktop system when it resets. And here we're back with our OData Olingo management server. And we're going to this time play with our mobile system. We can again see that we have all of our options here. And we can see our boot options are over here. If we come back to our, our, our mobile system, we can see that uh, by using the UFI network stack and AMI's own custom drivers, we're able to shed all the cords from our system and still, and still configure each system. If we come back to our management server, we can go ahead and enable quiet boot. We'll come over and save it, save the changes. And now if we restart our mobile system, we will see that the first time it comes up, we'll still have quiet boot disabled, but the second time we come up, we'll have it enabled. Here once again getting the, the data from our server. And now we're coming up in quiet boot enabled. So I hope you enjoyed our demonstration of how you can build management solutions on top of the UEFI network stack that are restful and very configurable. Uh, you can also expand this to multiple different management solutions more than just firmware configuration. Uh, you can build solutions where firmware updates are pushed uh, through the system so every single time a machine boots it will check in with the server to try to pull a firmware update. You could also push uh, OS updates, you could deploy operating systems, you could do backup and restore operations. With uh, the network capabilities that are built into UEFI at this point, the sky's the limit for uh, the amount of things you can do with it in the firmware space. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and ask us questions. Okay, and finally, call to actions. OEM should get involved and read specification and add support accordingly. End customers should get involved and ask their OEMs for Redfish-based solutions. Uh, the industry should work together to create an ecosystem where more advanced solutions can be created. And everyone should get involved in the UFI and other specifications to continue the evolution.